Dickinson provides students with the skills and knowledge they need to meet the scientific challenges of their generation and to make a difference in a fast-changing world. One of the things that I really liked about Dickinson was that it basically the sky was the limit. Whatever I wanted to do, I would be able to have the opportunity to pursue it. Dickinson was founded in 1783 by Dr. Benjamin Rush, a signer of the Declaration of Independence, who was also a renowned physician and pioneering medical researcher. Benjamin Rush was a scientist. This fundamentally is a scientific college. Dr. Rush's revolutionary spirit and commitment to science continues at Dickinson today. It's what we aspire to as scientists, to have a breakthrough, to discover something that works with that revolutionary spirit. If you want to explore cutting-edge fields such as nanoscience, bioinformatics, neuroscience, plasma physics, or environmental science, enjoy state-of-the-art science facilities and labs, use high-tech professional-grade equipment, and gain real-world experiences that will give you an edge in graduate school and on the job, then Dickinson College may be the right place for you. If you don't want to hide in the back of a lecture hall, if you want the professor in your first science class to know your name, if you want to have opportunities to explore something that maybe you've never heard about or something that's excited you since you were five years old, that is here. Dickinson students combine rigorous coursework in their major subject with a solid foundation in the liberal arts. Our science students learn to write effectively, think critically, and problem solve creatively by finding connections between disciplines. In a liberal arts atmosphere, you're taught to think broadly about problems. And I think that also allows you to see and bring in diverse pieces of evidence that, that people who aren't trained broadly just can't see. I get to take various courses in biology, psychology, and chemistry, so you really get a good, a good well-rounded knowledge of how the human brain works. I was able to kind of mix my interest in diversity initiatives and um, social justice issues and women's health and women's issues with science. I can take chemistry classes and then when I'm finished with the laboratory I can go to the studio start taking painting classes and maybe while they I'll be able to combine them. Being able to collaborate at Dickinson in different departments has given me kind of the real sense of what it's going to be like in the real world. I'm thinking of either pursuing a career in research or perhaps going into policy work, looking at either science policy, global health policy. Dickinson's new state-of-the-art rector science complex prepares students for 21st century research and work. Um, the new science building is obviously a great example of having facilities that allow research. Um, it allows faculty to do research with students. It's certainly possible sometimes to do that without great facilities, but great facilities really enhance that experience. Stewart and James Halls feature 90,000 square feet of open space classrooms, lab facilities, and shared spaces that encourage students and faculty to communicate and collaborate both in and out of the classroom. The space here is incredible. And I have a student office, I have labs at my disposal, I can come in and use any computer and printer, I can use any of the machinery that I'm familiar with from learning about in class. Offices and classrooms are arranged not by individual subjects, but by research partnerships, joining professors and students from different science disciplines. Dickinson also has a planetarium and observatory plasma physics, human physiology, and GIS labs. This is state of the art, and you feel like you're at the cutting edge. Inside our Rector Science Complex, you'll find high-tech, professional-grade equipment. Our students begin to use these powerful resources in their very first lab course. Everything's there for the undergrads. There's no grad students, there's no postdocs, there's no med students that are going to be taking away resources from the undergrads. One of the pieces of equipment that I have in my lab is called an atomic force microscope that my first year student's going to be using later this semester. My senior research is going to be using an XRF, an SEM. Dickinson has learned and understood that there's a value in having students use that. Dickinson students gain practical skills and in-depth knowledge through hands-on educational experiences. The field is our laboratory. Um, in environmental science, you know, we collect da data on natural systems, and natural systems are in the field. We were given the opportunity to visit the Chesapeake Bay watershed and the Mississippi River Basin watershed. 
and see the problems associated with those environmentally and socially, politically, economically. The different aspects that we have at Dickinson, like Alarm, or like the Treehouse, or like the Organic Farm, really give us skills in communicating with people, it's something that you can't really learn in the classroom. Lectures are kept to a minimum in our acclaimed physics program. Our workshop physics students learn and develop concepts through hands-on exploration and experiments. These physicians and nurses then started asking me about my research and instead of talking, teaching me how to do this diagnostic experiment, I was actually telling them about my research. Dickinson is a recognized leader in the college sustainability movement. In 2008, the college established a Center for Environmental and Sustainability Education, a program that weaves environmental education into the curriculum. You'll find an Alliance for Aquatic Resource Monitoring at Dickinson, as well as two LEED Gold certified buildings, a biodiesel plant, a sustainable living residence hall for students, and a working farm, which provides the campus with fresh, homegrown produce. One of the defining features of, of the education here is that it's a liberal arts education that's intended to be useful, and useful from the point of view of uh, having our graduates become engaged citizens. I, I think we're really ahead in a lot of ways from a lot of other schools. We're leading them in our ideas and what we're able to accomplish in terms of sustainability. Because of these initiatives, Dickinson was named on the Princeton Review's Green Honor Roll and earned the highest score possible on the Sustainable Endowments Institute's Green Report Card. The college was also part of Sierra Magazine's Cool Schools list. Our faculty members work closely with the students. They act as guides and mentors as students publish research in professional journals and present at professional conferences. Our research is more fundamentally accessible, I think, to undergraduates, and we include them in it almost every phase of it, including writing papers published in scientific journals. Having publications as an undergraduate means that you're already acting as a graduate student. So you are engaging in the behavior and gaining the skills that graduate students do. Students also conduct field work with their professors. Some students gather data regionally in nearby streams, mountains, and trails. Students also conduct field work in exotic locations such as Montserrat, Iceland, Costa Rica, and Guam. UCLA cultivates uh, these bacterial sam samples and sends cloned vectors to us and then we sequence them and try and find basically new bacteria. This is just a matter of great pride for the student to be able to say, I've contributed to science and not everybody can say that. Dickinson College offers study abroad programs that complement our science curriculum. Because students can take upper level science classes abroad and get credit for these courses in their major, they can study abroad and still graduate in four years. When you're a science major, it's hard to travel abroad. And at Dickinson, not only are you able to travel abroad, but the courses that you take are able to count towards your major. Students went with their professors to Venezuela and stayed at a collective farm to compare sort of what's being done there to uh, change the way we uh, operate our farm here. Dickinson is a gateway to the world, and I think it'll always be that way. Dickinsonians go places. Recent graduates have entered the country's top graduate programs and medical schools. For example, Ben Titi is researching cancer at Princeton University. Treasure Walker is completing her internship at Lehigh Valley Hospital after earning a medical degree at the University of Maryland Medical School. Kelly LaRue is pursuing a PhD in molecular biology at Princeton, and Riddick Nyogi is earning a doctorate in neuroscience at the Gatsby Computational Neuroscience Unit in London. The fact that I'm able to do this research and the fact that I was able to go to Ireland and work in a hospital and really not have to have very much initial direction really proves that I've accomplished something here. Coming into, into Princeton, I, was, I felt extremely well prepared having gone to Dickinson. I think that a lot of my classmates that had gone to big you know, Ivy League institutions had, you know, had great lecture courses and things like that, but they really didn't have the hands-on experience that I had. Our graduates excel in the workplace as well. Dickinson alumni are employed at major private and government institutions, such as ExxonMobil and the National Institute of Health. And Chad Merkin from the class of 86 was recently appointed by President Obama to the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology. 
These accomplished scientists are part of a worldwide alumni network that can benefit Dickinsonians throughout their careers. If you want to do something, you can do it. There's, there's really no one stopping you from, from reaching however high you want to go.